Hello, my name is Noel Tobin from Tobin No Till, and I'm very happy to be able to bring you the details of our Tornado Parallelogram opener today. If I can start by saying or by determining where we want to be with a planting machine, and we concentrate and we specialise on no-till equipment. And the building blocks of no-till equipment are what's important. Any planter you buy should maximise the use of your machine to complement the various aspects of no-till that we're actually trying to do. And mainly they are as follows, uh, retaining stubble, low disturbance and low weed seed germination. So everything about that you're looking at a planter, you've got to consider how the various aspects of the planter will complement what you're actually trying to do in a no-till situation. These building blocks will ensure maximum moisture retention and preserve the microbial system below the ground that make available decomposed plant and animal material and convert it into food for the crop in the years to come. So along with the ease of operation, the cost of the machine always important, the durability, the service, these ought to be the governing criteria when you're looking at buying a new plant. So this is our parallelogram opener, the whole assembly that we put on the tornado machines. The main components are the main parallelogram to begin with, which rise and fall to follow the contours. On top of that, we've got what we call a depth control parallelogram, which is another small parallelogram that piggybacks on top of the main parallelogram, which in turn controls this linkage and pushes the gauge wheel up and down, which actually adjusts our depth. So we've got the two parallelograms, we've got the disc, we've got the boot and the scraper assembly, which is the ground engaging, we've got the gauge wheel. And we've got the press wheel, which we can vary the, the downward pressure. So getting back to the first component, which is the main parallelogram. The downforce pressure is through hydraulics, and it's very easy to vary that on the go from the tractor cab. If that's our total range, we can probably vary it within that range. And, and just to give you some numbers on that, if you set the breakout for, let's say for argument's sake, for 200 kilograms, we do that by charging the accumulator with nitrogen. We set it up for 200, 200 kg. But then we, we charge the system from the tractor and we've got a gauge sitting out the front. And depending on the reading on that gauge, you can actually vary that from about 100 to 300 kilograms. So that is very effective when you go from a soft spot to a hard spot in the paddock, or you come to a bunch of rocks where you want it to break it away as easy as possible and do minimum damage. It really protects the machine, and it's simple to do, absolutely no effort from the tractor cab. When we switched to the parallelogram disc opener, we didn't want to be just another parallelogram. So one of the things we did was built it strong and durable. And to do that, we put in a 200 millimeter pin with a bush on each end. This has been the downfall of most parallelograms already on the market, where they have maybe a 75 millimeter pin, and there's just not enough strength in it to keep the whole assembly from wearing out. The pin wears out, the bearing, the bush wears out, whatever you've got there. So we've got very good lateral stability. And of course, that comes at a cost. And the closest we can get these parallelograms is actually about 300 millimeters. That's not the end of the world. It just means for anything less than 300 millimeters, we've got to have two rows. This main parallelogram, which are these four pivots, the main pivots, that is going up and down all day in the paddock. I've got here this link. It's exactly the same link as that. And this is the pin that fits into it. So you can see it's got good lateral stability. Now, if I can show you the build. In here is the housing. 
and we've got a bush at each end, and in the center, we've got a grease cavity. So when the pin goes through, there's actually a cavity in there that will go right around the pin and go out to the sides, infiltrate out through the bush to keep this well lubricated. Now, even though they manufacture and sell them as non-greasable, uh, we recommend two or three times a year a spin around the machine and on each unit there's five grease nipples. So our main pivot points have got a very good build. We've got good lateral stability with a bush on each side, the grease chamber in the middle which feeds grease out as time progresses. But I can't stress enough the importance of keeping the machine shedded and look after it. Of course it depends on how many hectares you do every year, that will have an influence on the longevity of the bush. So keep it shedded, keep it away from the elements, grease it two or three times a year. We reckon it'll probably last about seven or 10 years. It's a very good build. Which brings us to the depth adjustment. The novel aspect of this is that the, the actual parallelogram will follow the contour. One of them could be up, one could be down, wherever you like, across the machine. You can still adjust the depth from the tractor cab. And this is the only parallelogram disc opener in the world where we can adjust the depth on the go from the tractor cab. As I said earlier, this parallelogram on top is actually the depth adjusting parallelogram is what we call it. So we've got an actuator on the front and this front link rotates around this fixed pivot backwards and forwards. It pushes through this parallelogram and through this link and pushes this, the disc into the ground or effectively lifts it out. To demonstrate how it actually worked, let's go and have a look in the paddock. To demonstrate the depth control, we've purposefully isolated this one up on a hump. Now you can see that's this disc is in the ground and this disc is actually out of the ground but let's say it's up on a hump. And this will happen all day, they will go up and down to follow the contours. Be that as it may, we can still adjust the depth from the tractor cab on the go. It doesn't matter what contour any particular unit. On a 40 foot machine, you might have 40 openers and they're all operating at different heights. Doesn't matter. We can still adjust the planting depth of them all on the go from the tractor cab. And even though they are at different levels, hump and hollow, the depth adjustment is still effective on both units. Uh, some machines, you've got to get a box of spanners, got to get a good toolbox, takes you half a day, and guess what? It doesn't happen. We are the only parallelogram disc planter in the world that allows you to vary the depth on the go from the tractor cab. This is very, very convenient if you've got soft spots, hard spots in the paddock, and of course, if you change varieties, canola to beans to wheat, you want to plant grass, it doesn't matter. Here it's a flick of the lever, uh, 30 second job and it's finished. So it's very, very convenient to be able to adjust it on the go from the tractor cab. So as this parallelogram goes backwards and forwards, through this link, it pushes down on the gauge wheel. To get them all tuned properly at the beginning from day one, go forward, plant whatever depth, say 25, 30 mils, dig a trench across, see what varies, and if any of them are out of tune, you can just adjust like this, it's very simple, undo this nut, and you can see now that the disc is raising or lowering. In actual fact, what happens is the gauge wheel will always stay on top of the ground. This will sink the disc in or lift it out. Once you've commissioned the machine and set it up, that's it. Now and again, you might want to vary a unit or two behind the wheel tracks, but that's about it. It's set and forget. Lock it up, and that's it. 
Here we've got the disc, which is 24 inches in diameter, 610 millimeters. That's got the advantage of being well out of the violence down on the ground, the bearing and the, all the bracketry is way up out of the ground, which preserves the bearing and bush, but also you stand a better chance of going through trash because all the bracketry is much higher off the ground. So we've got a very big disc, 24 inches in diameter. Now it doesn't matter how thick you make a disc, when it hits a rock or an immovable object in the ground, it'll, it'll deflect slightly. To compensate for that, we've got a scraper, and the scraper clings to the disc by virtue of this torsion spring here. And you can adjust the torsion spring. Now it's, now it's loose, as you can see. The scraper pivots on this axis, and also this axis. So it doesn't matter how much the disc or which way it distorts, when the spring is tensioned up, it'll cling to the disc. Now the advantage of having an adjustable scraper is if you're going at night time in, in wet sticky conditions, instead of the disc caking up, you'll keep it clean so you can crank it up to the next notch maybe and, and go all night in wet sticky conditions, particularly up in the in northern New South Wales, between Moree and Walgett, for example, you can keep the disc clean. The function of the scraper is to provide a conduit into the ground, a safe conduit for the seed. So it deflects debris, it deflects incoming debris, soil, rocks, twigs, pieces of timber. But when you have it there, you must make sure it doesn't clog up. And this is the best scraper system I've seen. As the disc rides along, it cuts a groove for the seed to go down. Now you will get a little bit of disturbance, but right beside the disc is our gauge wheel. And as that soil is disturbed, the gauge wheel presses it back in again. So this machine truly is low disturbance, which will keep your microbial activity intact and keep your moisture in the ground for the upcoming crop. One of the features of the whole assembly is our build on the bearings. First of all, all three bearings are exactly the same. It's, it's a car bearing. Uh, we, we pack it with grease using the compressor. And on one side, we've got a seal protector. And on the other side, we've got a dust cap cover, which basically insulates what's inside from the violence and the, the moisture outside. So it's a good build, it's very well protected. And that's why we can afford to give a three year warranty on all three bearings. So then we get to the press wheel. The press wheel we can adjust laterally. And that's probably a set and forget idea as well. Once you're happy with it, you generally leave it the way it is. To vary the downward pressure on the press wheel, we simply pull this pin and you can vary it up and down through this compression spring here. We can put more or less pressure on it as, as we see fit. And you simply put the pin back in again. Okay, we'll do double discs. First, a view from the sky. We've got a disc on each side opening up the soil. The boot is in the middle and it drops the seed down. At planting depth, these two discs will have to come together to open up the ground in the middle so that the seed drops down. Let's examine the section looking at the soil from the back. These are the forces the disc have to exert to create the trench on both sides. It's using compressive forces. So the disadvantage of a double disc opener include soil compaction. If these soils are hard, it is going to be difficult to push soil away to form the trench. Imagine ground already being hard. It's going to resist and push back against the disc. 
for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. You're going to get a lot more compaction in this area. It goes without saying that this is the main drawback with using double disc openers. When you use these compressive forces it will collapse the voids, create more fines and worst of all you're going to create smearing. It will smear the sides of the trench and if it's moist at all then the sun shines on it, it will dry out and it'll be hard as a rock. Because the forces required are much higher, you're going to have more stress on the components. We don't want to create extra work for the components. We don't want to create extra compression on the soils. The soils that are right beside the seed and we don't want smearing. Some manufacturers have a setup with the disc that open the soil with the disc angled to the direction of travel only. That's our planting boot. What happens in this case are the compressive forces are that way. Once again, very difficult to form a trench by using compressive forces. The compressive forces in the soils are going to push back. In hard soils, it's a lot more difficult when you push the soils together. They are going to form fines. This is detrimental to the whole idea of no-till. It compresses the soils and you get smearing. And farmers often complain about, particularly in compacted or wet soils, you get smearing on the sides of the trench. That's what causes it. Again, due to compressive forces, there will be high stress on components and brackets. What are we looking for? We are looking for a disc that's angled to both directions. If that's the direction of travel, and this is looking from behind, when the disc is angled in both the direction of travel and the vertical, then this is the planting depth. The forces used to make this trench are going to be tensile forces. They're going to tear the soil apart. This here has got many advantages. It's not using compressive forces. It's easy to penetrate. The soil is a lot more likely to peel away. It eliminates smearing. And because it is easier to penetrate, that throws up other advantages. It's going to be easier on the bearings, the bracketry, etc, etc. All the components of the disc. It's common to have discs down to 400 mm diameter. But our Tobin is 610, and there are a number of advantages to having a large disc diameter. The bearing is out of harm's way, of dirt, trash, logs, stones, rocks, rather than with the small disc. The green attack angle of the larger disc has a much better chance of pushing the stubble against the soil and using the resistance of the soil to get a clean cut and for longer also resulting in a more effective cut. Whereas the red attack angle of the small disc, and it has a good chance of pushing the stubble along in front of it, rather than cutting it, will be more likely to bullnose. In rocky conditions, the large disc will roll over the rocks more easily than a small disc, increasing the life of the bearings and components. Sticky soils in particular have been a great challenge for disc planter manufacturers. And, but what actually happens? We have a boot going down in the shadow of the disc, releasing seed into the soil. The boot and the seed drop must be protected by a scraper, or some sort. And there are many different types of scrapers. The scraper acts as a conduit for the seed into the ground after it leaves the boot. It's vital that the scraper does not block up. The more stickier the soils are, the greater the tension must be on the scraper against the disc to prevent mud buildup. As a result, 
The scraper will act as a brake on the disc's rotation. The rotation of the disc is caused by the friction of the ground. The ground is pulling on this small disc and this is the leverage it has. When you go from 400 millimeters to 600, you've increased the leverage by one and a half times. 50% more leverage. And we all know more leverage is going to generate better torque and easier to turn. Much easier to keep operating in difficult, sticky conditions. It'll operate all day. So this opener is used for broad acre cropping, cereals, legumes and oil seeds, but it's also used for rejuvenating pasture. In fact, it's ideal for rejuvenating pasture. A lot of pasture paddocks in the center of the paddock, it might be nice, but as you come towards the edges, there's a lot of rocks and stumps or logs sitting around. From the tractor cab, you can release the breakout. Not that you would ever want to plant grass uh, this deep into grass, but you can see there's, there's plenty of uh, mulch on top there. It's cut right through it. Now we're getting a little bit of disturbance because we're going so deep, but let's see how deep we're going. So it's going down there about three or four inches. For the depth it's going, it's left relatively little disturbance. And those straw, it's cutting through beautifully. It's a very good seed bed. Most pastures are undulating to a greater extent than your cropping area. And of course, this has got the ability to glide over the humps and hollows. And also, of course, it won't destroy what you've already got there. Whatever plants you've already growing, as well as being a no-till planter, it's a no-kill planter. So that whatever is there will keep growing and you will get the benefit of it as feed for your stock. For cropping, of course, it's ideal. It complements what the no-till farmer is trying to do. The stubble retention, the minimum disturbance, the preservation of the microbial activity below the ground. It is very gentle on the soil. It doesn't kill the towns and villages where all the microbial activity is living and carrying on their business day after day, breaking down plant and animal material and converting them into food for upcoming crops. A lot of farmers say, we're not farming the soil, we're farming moisture. So we've got a given amount of moisture every year, and we've got to make the best of that. And of course, with continuous use of no-till equipment, the idea is to get the moisture to infiltrate where it falls and not flow off, creating erosion or whatever. We want it to fall down and infiltrate straight away. And we don't want to come on and plow it up we want minimum disturbance and make sure we keep that moisture in the ground to be used for the crop and nothing else. Look, thank you very much for watching this video on, on our opener. We're very excited about the design. We're very excited about the build of the parallelogram, the, the minimum wear on the pins, the build on the bearings, where we've got it actually almost bulletproof. And we give a three-year warranty on these. And also we give a three-year warranty on the structure, on the frame. If you crack the frame within three years, we'll fix it. So we're very excited about this design. It's taken us a fair while to design it and perfect it. And it's been an absolute pleasure bringing you the details. If you've got any questions, there's my email address. If you've got any questions, please, I would love to hear from you. And in the meantime, Happy cropping.